Most common situations at the office. One, team meetings, regular gatherings to discuss project updates, goals, and strategies. Good morning, Jane. Ready for today's team meeting? Morning, John. Absolutely. I've got my notes and coffee. Let's dive in. Excellent. So, first on the agenda, project updates. Jane, how's the website redesign coming along? Thanks for asking, John. We've made significant progress. The new layout is clean. And the responsive design is almost finalized. Just a few tweaks left. Great work, Jane. Next, goals. Our quarterly target is to increase user engagement by 20%. Any ideas? Definitely. I propose launching a user survey to gather feedback. We can identify pain points and tailor our improvements accordingly. Agreed. Now, strategies. Our social media presence needs a boost. Jane, can you share your thoughts? Certainly. Let's focus on interactive content, polls, quizzes, and behind-the-scenes glimpses. Engaging our audience will drive traffic. Love it. And remember, we're a team. Any challenges or roadblocks, speak up. Jane, anything you'd like to discuss? Well, John, budget constraints worry me. We need resources for targeted ads. Can we revisit the allocation? Valid concern, Jane. Let's schedule a separate meeting to address it. Thanks for raising it. My pleasure, John. And one last thing, kudos to the team for hitting last month's conversion rate goal. Absolutely. Keep up the momentum, Jane. See you at the next meeting. Two, brainstorming sessions, collaborative idea generation for problem solving or innovation. Hey Jane, I was thinking about our upcoming project and how we could approach it with some fresh ideas. How about we schedule a brainstorming session? That's a great idea, John. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I believe a collaborative approach to generating ideas could really benefit our project. Exactly. I think getting everyone's perspectives and creativity involved could lead us to some innovative solutions. What do you think should be the focus of our brainstorming session? Well, considering the challenges we've encountered in the past phases of the project. Perhaps we could focus on identifying potential bottlenecks and brainstorming ways to overcome them. What do you reckon? I completely agree. Addressing potential obstacles proactively could save us a lot of time and effort down the line. We could also explore new approaches or technologies that might streamline our processes. Absolutely. I'll put together an agenda for the session and circulate it to the team. It might be helpful to set some ground rules to ensure everyone feels comfortable sharing their ideas. Good thinking, Jane. Encouraging an open and non-judgmental atmosphere is key to fostering creativity and collaboration. Perhaps we could also assign a facilitator to keep the discussion focused and ensure everyone gets a chance to contribute. I like that idea. It'll help keep the session productive 
and ensure we make the most of everyone's time. Let's aim to schedule the brainstorming session for early next week, so we can hit the ground running with our project. Sounds like a plan, Jane. Thanks for being proactive about this. I'm excited to see what ideas our team comes up with. Me too, John. I have a feeling this brainstorming session will be the catalyst for some breakthroughs in our project. Looking forward to it. 3. Client or stakeholder meetings, interactions with external parties to discuss projects, progress, and feedback. Hey Jane, do you have a minute to chat about our upcoming client meetings? Of course, John. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to touch base with you regarding the agenda for our next client meeting scheduled for Thursday. I think it's crucial that we're both on the same page about what we'll be discussing with them. Absolutely, I agree. I've already drafted a rough outline of the topics I think we should cover based on our previous interactions and the feedback we've received from the client. Great, could you walk me through it briefly? Sure. First, I think we should start by providing them with an update on the progress of our current projects. They've been eager to see some tangible results, so we need to be prepared to showcase our achievements and address any concerns they might have. That sounds like a solid plan. After that, I suggest we dive into discussing their expectations for the next phase of the project. It's essential to ensure that we're aligned with their vision and objectives moving forward. Agreed. Additionally, I think it would be beneficial to seek their input on any potential areas for improvement or adjustments to our approach. Their feedback is invaluable in helping us refine our strategies and deliverables. Definitely. And let's not forget to touch upon any outstanding issues or challenges they may have encountered since our last meeting. We want to reassure them that we're committed to addressing their concerns promptly and effectively. Absolutely, John. I'll make sure to incorporate all of these points into the agenda and send it over to you for review before the meeting. Perfect. Thanks, Jane. I appreciate your proactive approach to planning these discussions. It's essential to ensure that our interactions with external parties are productive and beneficial for all involved. My pleasure, John. I couldn't agree more. Let's make sure we're well prepared and ready to impress our clients with our professionalism and dedication to their success. Sounds like a plan. Thanks again, Jane. Looking forward to another successful meeting with our clients. Likewise, John. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too, John. 4. Email overload, managing a flood of emails, prioritizing, and responding promptly. Good morning, Jane. The inbox seems to be overflowing again. How do you handle this email overload? Morning, John. Oh, I know the feeling. It's like a digital tsunami sometimes. Here are a few strategies I use. 1. Unsubscribe. I've been ruthless with those store newsletters and random subscriptions. If I haven't used a service in years, I hit that unsubscribe button without hesitation. 2. Notification management. I turned off email notifications on my phone. It's amazing how much calmer I feel without constant pings. And I did the same for social media apps, less distraction. 
Three dot excessive senders. You know those colleagues who split one message into ten emails. I've had a polite chat with them. Fewer, concise messages make life easier. For dot delegation, when overwhelmed, I delegate. If I can't handle it all, I pass tasks to someone else. Teamwork, right? Five dot boss talk. Sometimes, it's top-down pressure. If I'm drowning, I talk to our boss. They usually understand and help prioritize. Those are solid tips, Jane. I'll definitely try the unsubscribe spree. And maybe I'll delegate more, I tend to be a one-person show. Remember, we're in this together. And don't forget to breathe. Email overload won't conquer us. 5. Deadline pressure, balancing multiple tasks and meeting project deadlines. Good morning, Jane. The project deadlines are closing in, and my to-do list is growing. How do you handle this constant pressure? Morning, John. Oh, I feel you. It's like juggling flaming torches sometimes. Here are a few strategies I use. One dot prioritization. I assess tasks based on urgency and importance. Some things can wait, while others need immediate attention. Two dot break it down. I break larger tasks into smaller chunks. It's less overwhelming, and I can track progress more effectively. 3. Dot time blocking. I allocate specific time blocks for different tasks. That way, I focus solely on one thing without distractions. 4. Dot communication. If I see a potential deadline clash, I communicate with my team or manager. Sometimes adjustments can be made. 5. Dot self-care. It's easy to forget, but taking short breaks actually boosts productivity. A walk, a deep breath, these matter. Those are solid tips, Jane. I tend to dive headfirst into everything. Maybe I should try the time-blocking technique. Remember, we're all racing against the clock. But it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Let's pace ourselves and conquer those deadlines. 6. Office politics, navigating relationships, conflicts, and power dynamics. Good morning, Jane. The project deadlines are closing in, and my to-do list is growing. How do you handle this constant pressure? Morning, John. Oh, I feel you. It's like juggling flaming torches sometimes. Here are a few strategies I use. 1. Dot prioritization. I assess tasks based on urgency and importance. Some things can wait, while others need immediate attention. 2. Dot break it down. I break larger tasks into smaller chunks. It's less overwhelming, and I can track progress more effectively. 3. Dot time blocking. I allocate specific time blocks for different tasks. That way, I focus solely on one thing without distractions. 4. Dot communication. If I see a potential deadline clash, I communicate with my team or manager. Sometimes adjustments can be made. 5. Dot self care. It's easy to forget, but taking short breaks actually boosts productivity. A walk, a deep breath, these matter. Those are solid tips, Jane. I tend to dive headfirst into everything. Maybe I should try the time blocking technique. Remember, we're all racing against the clock. 
But it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Let's pace ourselves and conquer those deadlines. Hey, Jane. You know, navigating office politics sometimes feels like tiptoeing through a minefield. How do you handle it? Oh, John, you're not alone. Office politics can be tricky. But here's what I've learned. One dot observation. I pay attention to the dynamics. Who's influential? Who's well connected? Understanding the power structure helps me navigate. Two-dot relationship building. I try to build genuine relationships. Not just for personal gain, but because collaboration is easier when you trust your colleagues. Three-dot transparency. I'm honest about my intentions. If I propose something, I explain why. Transparency reduces suspicion. For dot conflict resolution, when conflicts arise, I address them directly. No passive aggressive emails, just a face to face chat. Five dot staying neutral. I avoid taking sides in unnecessary battles. It's like Switzerland, neutral ground. Solid advice, Jane. But what about when someone tries to undermine you? Ah, the classic power play. I acknowledge it, but stay focused on my work. Competence speaks louder than gossip. And what if you're caught in a crossfire between managers? Tough spot, John. I listen, empathize, but don't fuel the fire. Sometimes, it's about survival. Survival indeed. Thanks, Jane. Let's keep our tiki torches burning in this survivor-like office. Agreed, John. And remember, we're all in this together, snakes and all. 7. Performance Reviews, Assessing Individual Performance and Setting Goals Hey Jane, I've been thinking about our upcoming performance reviews. It's that time of year again, and I want to make sure we approach it effectively. Absolutely, John. Performance reviews are crucial for both personal growth and organizational success. What's on your mind? Well, I believe setting clear goals is essential. It gives us direction and focus. You know, like a roadmap for our professional journey. Agreed. Individual career goals help us understand what we need to accomplish. And when our personal goals align with the organization's objectives, it creates synergy across the entire team. Right. And measurable goals allow for objective evaluations. We can track our progress, identify areas for improvement, and celebrate achievements. Plus, a workforce driven by meaningful goals is more engaged. When we feel a sense of accomplishment, it boosts morale and encourages proactive work. Exactly. And goals aren't just for us. They contribute to the organization's overall adaptability and competitiveness. A continuously improving workforce benefits everyone. Speaking of development, goals also encourage us to acquire new skills. Whether it's technical expertise, leadership abilities, or communication skills, setting goals pushes us to learn and grow. Agreed. So, how do you plan to approach your performance review this year? Well, I've been reflecting on my achievements and areas where I can improve. I want to set specific, measurable goals that align with our team's objectives. 
and I'll seek feedback from colleagues and supervisors to ensure I'm on the right track. Sounds like a solid plan. I'll do the same. Let's make sure our goals contribute to our professional development and the success of our team. Definitely, John. And remember, it's not just about the review, it's about continuous improvement. Let's aim high. 8. Tech glitches, dealing with computer crashes, software issues, or network problems. Hey Jane, I've been dealing with some annoying tech glitches lately. It's like my computer has a mind of its own. Oh, I feel you, John. Tech hiccups can really throw us off track. What kind of issues are you facing? Well, first off, my computer keeps freezing randomly. It's frustrating when I'm in the middle of something important. I've been there. One simple trick is to update and reboot regularly. Sometimes we forget to install those pesky updates and they can cause glitches. Restarting the system often works wonders. Good point. I guess I've been neglecting those updates. And you know what else bugs me? Slow internet. My Wi-Fi acts up, especially during video calls. Ah, the dreaded spotty Wi-Fi. Here's a tip. Check if the website issue you're experiencing is widespread. Sometimes it's just a local problem due to cookies or cache. Clear your history and cookies, or go incognito. If that doesn't work, Flush the DNS cache and restart your device. That makes sense. I'll give it a shot. But what about software glitches? Last week, my email client crashed out of the blue. When it comes to software, uninstall and reinstall the malfunctioning program. It's like hitting the reset button. Also, Double check your cables make sure they are securely connected. Loose cables can cause all sorts of issues. Got it. And speaking of annoyances, spam emails flood my inbox. Any advice there? Ah, the eternal battle against spam. Consider using temporary email services to avoid clutter. And if all else fails, trace back to recent changes. Did you install a new app or update something? Sometimes that's the culprit. Thanks, Jane. These tips are practical and straightforward. And if worse comes to worst, I'll share detailed info with our IT support team. Exactly. They are there to help. Let's conquer those tech glitches together, John. 9. Lunch breaks, finding time to recharge and socialize with colleagues. Hey Jane, I've been thinking about our lunch breaks lately. It's essential to find that time to recharge, don't you think? Absolutely, John. Lunch breaks are more than just a meal. They're a chance to recharge and connect with colleagues. What's on your mind? Well, I've noticed that taking a break alone doesn't always feel refreshing. Maybe we should consider socializing during our lunch breaks. It could make a difference. You're spot on, John. Socializing during breaks has several benefits. First, it improves productivity. When we step away from work and chat with co-workers, it gives our minds a break. 
We return with renewed energy and focus. True. And it's not just about productivity. Socializing also contributes to our well-being. It reduces stress and creates a sense of connection. Plus, it's nice to catch up with colleagues beyond work tasks. Absolutely. Building and maintaining relationships at work is crucial. When we take breaks together, it strengthens our bonds and fosters a sense of community. And you know what? Greater job satisfaction often follows strong workplace connections. So, how can we incorporate more socializing into our lunch breaks? Any ideas? Sure. Here are a few practical ways. 1. Take a walk with a colleague. It's a great way to get some exercise and catch up with a friend. 2. Have a quick chat over coffee. Spend a few minutes chatting with a colleague over coffee or tea. 3. Lunch break together. Instead of eating alone, invite a colleague or friend to join you for lunch. Those sound doable. And maybe we could explore group activities too like joining a workplace club or participating in team building events. Excellent suggestion. And if we can't physically socialize during breaks, we can always use social media to connect with co-workers. Agreed. So, let's make our lunch breaks count, Jane. Recharge, socialize, and come back to work with a fresh perspective. Coffee breaks, brief respites for coffee, tea, or a quick chat. Hey Jane, I've been thinking about our coffee breaks lately. They're like little islands of sanity in our workday chaos. Absolutely, John. Coffee breaks are essential for recharging and connecting with colleagues. Plus, they give us a chance to step away from our screens and take a mental breather. True. And you know what? A well-spent coffee break can actually boost productivity. It's not just about the caffeine, it's about those few minutes of downtime. Agreed. So, how do you usually spend your coffee breaks? Well, sometimes I just grab my coffee and retreat to a quiet corner to catch up on emails. But lately, I've been wondering if there are better ways to use that time. Oh, there definitely are. Let's brainstorm some ideas. 1. Icebreaker questions. We could kick off our coffee breaks with a fun icebreaker question. You know, something like, What's the best show you watched during the pandemic? It's a great way to get to know each other beyond work tasks. 2. Trivia time. How about a quick trivia game? We could take turns asking each other random questions. I bet you didn't know Jason Mraz is an avocado farmer who supplies avocados to Chipotle. 3. Guided meditation. Sometimes, I need a mental reset. We could do a short guided meditation, just a few minutes to breathe, center ourselves, and recharge. 4. Show and tell, we could each share something interesting. Maybe a photo of our favorite place in the world, or a quirky fact about ourselves. It's like a mini show and tell session. I love these ideas. And you know what else? We could even do a virtual coffee tasting. Imagine receiving a kit with unique coffees and teas, and then we all gather online to sip and discuss. It's like a coffee break upgrade. That's brilliant. Let's call it tea versus coffee. 
We'll become connoisseurs of caffeine. Agreed. And let's not forget the simple joy of sharing a laugh or a funny meme during our breaks. It's those little moments that make work feel less like work. Absolutely, John. So, here's to more meaningful coffee breaks and fewer rushed sips at our desks. 11. Collaboration challenges, coordinating work with team members across departments. Jane, I've been thinking about how we can improve collaboration across departments. It's crucial for our projects to run smoothly, but sometimes it feels like we're all working in silos. You're absolutely right, John. Cross-functional collaboration is essential, but it's not always easy. What specific challenges are you facing? Well, for starters, conflicting goals. Marketing wants to focus on lead generation, while product development is all about enhancing features. It's like we're pulling in opposite directions. True. We need alignment on our goals. Maybe we should have a quarterly meeting where each team shares their priorities. That way, we can find common ground and work towards shared objectives. Agreed. And communication is another hurdle. Sometimes, I feel like I'm speaking a different language when I talk to the engineering team. They throw around acronyms, and I'm lost. I've been there. Maybe we could organize cross-departmental workshops to demystify jargon. Let's create a glossary of terms that everyone can refer to. Good idea. And what about time constraints? When we propose a joint project, other teams often say they're too busy. How do we overcome that? We could establish a project management framework. Set clear timelines, allocate resources, and involve team leads early on. If everyone understands the impact of the project, they'll make time for it. Lastly, leadership support matters. Without buy-in from the top, collaboration efforts can fizzle out. How do we ensure our executives champion cross-departmental teamwork? Let's present a case study on successful collaboration. Show them how it directly impacts productivity, innovation, and customer satisfaction. Numbers speak louder than words. Jane, you're a genius. Let's put these solutions into action. Our next product launch will be a testament to our improved collaboration. Deal, John. And remember, it's not just about tools. It's about fostering a culture of collaboration. Together, we'll break down those silos. 12. Workspace organization, keeping desks tidy and efficient. Jane, I've been thinking about how we can improve our workspace organization. It's crucial for our productivity, but sometimes it feels like chaos in here. You're absolutely right, John. A cluttered desk can hinder our focus and efficiency. What specific challenges are you facing? Well, for starters, I struggle with paper clutter. Reports, memos, and sticky notes pile up, and I can't find anything when I need it. I hear you. Let's tackle that. How about we designate specific zones on our desks? One area for active projects, another for reference materials, and a third for personal items. Good idea. And what about all these cables? My laptop charger, phone charger, and earphones are all tangled up. Cable management is essential. 
We can use adhesive cable clips to keep them organized and prevent them from snaking across our desks. Plus, a wireless charging pad could eliminate some cords altogether. Agreed. Now, what about those random office supplies? Pens, paper clips, and sticky notes seem to multiply overnight. Drawer organizers are our friends. We can use them to separate pens, paper clips, and other small items. And let's keep only the essentials on our desks, no need for excess clutter. Speaking of drawers, mine is a mess. I can't find anything in there. Drawer dividers. They'll segment the drawer into different sections. We'll have a spot for pens, another for notepads, and so on. Plus, labeling each section helps us stay organized. Jane, you're a lifesaver. And what about personal touches? A plant or a photo frame? Absolutely. Personalization is essential. A small potted plant or a framed family photo can make our workspace feel more inviting without cluttering it. Lastly, let's commit to a daily cleaning routine. Five minutes at the end of the day to declutter and organize it'll work wonders. Deal, John. A tidy desk leads to a clear mind. Let's keep our workspace efficient and inspiring. 13. Office celebrations, birthdays, promotions, or team achievements. Jane, I've been thinking about how we can make our office celebrations more memorable. Birthdays, promotions, and team achievements deserve some extra flair, don't you think? Absolutely, John. Celebrating these milestones boosts morale and strengthens our team spirit. What ideas do you have? Well, let's start with birthdays. How can we make them special for everyone? Great question. Instead of just a generic, happy birthday email, how about personalized shoutouts? We could create a virtual birthday board where colleagues share fun memories or express appreciation. And of course, cake whether it's in person or a virtual cake cutting session. I like that. And what about promotions? When someone climbs the career ladder, it's a big deal. Agreed. Let's organize a mini celebration during our team meeting. Share the news, applaud the promoted team member, and maybe even have a symbolic passing of the torch moment. A small gift or a heartfelt note goes a long way too. Speaking of team achievements, Hitting milestones deserves recognition. How can we celebrate those wins? Team lunches. Whether in person or virtually, breaking bread together fosters camaraderie. We could also create a wall of fame where we display photos and achievements of successful projects. And don't forget a round of applause during all hands meetings. Jane, you're full of great ideas. But what about remote team members? How can we include them? Virtual celebrations. We can host online parties, trivia games, or even a virtual escape room. And for remote birthdays, we could send personalized e-cards or surprise them with a doorstep delivery. Perfect. Let's put these plans into action. Our office celebrations are about to level up. Cheers to that, John. Remember, it's not just about the event, it's about making everyone feel valued and appreciated. 14. Work-life balance, juggling work responsibilities with personal life.
Jane, I've been thinking about how we can achieve a better work-life balance. It feels like we're constantly juggling work responsibilities with personal life. Any thoughts? You're absolutely right, John. Balancing work and personal life is crucial for our well-being. Let's break it down. Agreed. So, what does work-life balance mean to you? In an ideal world, it means giving equal importance to both our professional and personal commitments. But let's be realistic, we won't achieve perfection. Instead, we need to set realistic goals at work and home. Expect disruptions and be prepared to adjust. True. What factors disrupt this balance? Plenty. Long working hours, inflexible schedules, fear of job loss, last-minute family obligations, the list goes on. Some factors are beyond our control, but others we can manage. For instance, we can reduce commute times or find backup childcare. And how does a healthy work-life balance benefit us? Great question. A balanced life brings both professional and personal benefits. It reduces stress, improves focus, and enhances overall happiness. Plus, it prevents burnout and keeps us productive. So, practical steps. First, set clear boundaries. Don't let work spill into personal time, or vice versa. Chaos ensues when those lines blur. Next, prioritize tasks focus on one thing at a time. Multitasking rarely works. Mindful presence, got it. But what about adjusting priorities? Regularly review what matters most. Identify core values in both work and personal life. Adjust as needed. And remember, saying no is okay. We can't do it all. Remote work adds another layer. How do we manage that? True. Set dedicated work hours even at home. Create a separate workspace. And disconnect when the workday ends. Our mental health matters. Jane, you're a lifesaver. Let's strive for that balance. Deal, John. Work hard, but also live well. That's the key. 15. Conflict resolution, addressing disagreements professionally. Hi Jane, do you have a moment to talk about the issue we encountered during yesterday's meeting? Of course, John. I've been thinking about it too. What's on your mind? Well, it seemed like there was a bit of tension between us regarding the project timeline. I wanted to address it directly and make sure we're on the same page moving forward. I agree. I felt there was some miscommunication, and I apologize if I came across as dismissive. Let's talk about our concerns openly. Thanks for acknowledging that, Jane. I think our main disagreement stemmed from the feasibility of the timeline. I believe we should reassess and possibly adjust it to ensure realistic expectations. I see your point. I was concerned about the impact on the quality of work if we rush through the project. Perhaps we can find a compromise that meets both deadlines and quality standards. That sounds reasonable. How about we schedule a meeting with the team to discuss our concerns and brainstorm solutions together? Agreed. It's essential to involve everyone in the decision-making process to ensure buy-in and collaboration. Absolutely. 
Let's aim to address this issue constructively and find a resolution that benefits the project and the team. Sounds like a plan, John. Thanks for initiating this conversation. I appreciate your professionalism in handling conflicts. Likewise, Jane. It's essential to address disagreements respectfully and proactively to maintain a positive work environment. 16. New hires, welcoming and integrating new colleagues. Hey Jane, I heard we have some new hires starting next week. Do you think we should do something to welcome them to the team? Absolutely, John. Welcoming new colleagues is crucial for setting a positive tone and integrating them into the team smoothly. I was thinking we could organize a small welcome lunch on their first day. That's a great idea. It gives everyone a chance to meet them in a more relaxed setting. Should we coordinate with HR to arrange it? Yes, definitely. I'll reach out to HR to see if they can help us with the logistics and budget for the lunch. In the meantime, we could also prepare welcome packages with some essential information about our team and company culture. Good thinking. It's essential to provide them with the resources they need to get started and feel comfortable in their new roles. We could also pair them up with mentors from the team to help them navigate their first few weeks. Agreed. Having a mentor can make a big difference in their onboarding experience. I'll put together a list of potential mentors and match them up based on their skills and interests. Sounds like a plan. Let's make sure to check in with them regularly during their first few weeks to see how they're adjusting and if they need any support. Definitely. Building a supportive and inclusive environment is key to retaining top talent and fostering a strong team culture. Couldn't agree more, Jane. I'm looking forward to welcoming our new colleagues and helping them succeed in their roles. Me too, John. It's always exciting to bring fresh perspectives and energy to the team. Thanks for your input on this. Anytime, Jane. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? 17. Office etiquette, politeness respect, and cultural awareness. Good morning, Jane. I wanted to chat with you about something regarding office etiquette. Good morning, John. Sure, what's on your mind? Well, I've noticed a few instances recently where some colleagues seem to overlook certain aspects of office etiquette. Like being punctual for meetings or keeping noise levels down in shared spaces. I've noticed that too, John. It's important for us to maintain a respectful and professional atmosphere in the office. Exactly. I think it's essential for everyone to be mindful of their actions and how they might impact their coworkers. Small gestures like cleaning up after oneself in the kitchen or refraining from loud personal conversations can make a big difference. Absolutely. And it's not just about following basic rules. It's also about being culturally aware and respectful of diversity in the workplace. Different cultures may have different norms and customs, so it's essential to be sensitive to that. That's a great point, Jane. We work with colleagues from various cultural backgrounds, and it's crucial to show understanding and respect for their traditions and practices. Definitely. I think a simple way to promote cultural awareness is through open communication and willingness to learn from each other. 
We can all benefit from sharing our experiences and perspectives. Absolutely agree. I'm glad we're having this conversation. It reminds us all of the importance of being polite, respectful, and culturally aware in the office. Me too, John. Thanks for bringing it up. Let's continue to lead by example and foster a positive and inclusive work environment. Sounds like a plan, Jane. Thanks for your insight. Let's strive to uphold the highest standards of office etiquette. 18. Networking events, building professional connections. Hey Jane, I noticed there's a networking event coming up next week. Are you planning to attend? Hi John. Yes, I saw the announcement too. I'm definitely considering it. How about you? I'm thinking of going. Networking events are great opportunities to expand our professional connections and learn from others in the industry. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. It's a chance to meet new people, exchange ideas, and possibly even discover new opportunities. Exactly. Plus, it's a chance to represent our company and showcase what we do. Definitely. Do you have any strategies for making the most out of networking events? Well, I usually try to do some research beforehand to identify key individuals or companies I'd like to connect with. And during the event, I focus on engaging in meaningful conversations and actively listening to others. That sounds like a good approach. I tend to be a bit shy in networking situations, but I'm working on stepping out of my comfort zone and initiating conversations. That's great to hear, Jane. Remember, everyone is there to network, so don't hesitate to introduce yourself and share your interests and experiences. Thanks for the encouragement, John. I'll keep that in mind. Maybe we can even attend the event together and support each other. I'd like that, Jane. Having a familiar face around can make networking events feel less daunting. Definitely. Let's plan to attend together then. It'll be a great opportunity to strengthen our professional relationships and learn from others. Agreed. Looking forward to it, Jane. 19. Training sessions, learning new skills or tools. Hey Jane, have you heard about the upcoming training sessions on the new project management software? Yes, I have, John. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a great opportunity for us to enhance our skills and streamline our processes. Absolutely. I've been reading up on the software, but I'm eager to get some hands-on training. It should help us become more efficient in managing our projects. Definitely. I'm hoping to learn some advanced techniques that will enable us to better track progress and collaborate effectively within the team. That's a good point. I think the training sessions will not only benefit us individually but also improve our team's overall productivity and performance. Agreed. Plus, it's always refreshing to learn something new and stay updated with the latest tools and technologies in our field. Couldn't agree more, Jane. Continuous learning is essential for professional growth and staying competitive in the industry. Absolutely. By investing in our skills development, 
We're also investing in the success of our projects and the company as a whole. Well said, Jane. I'm glad we're both on the same page about the importance of these training sessions. Let's make the most out of them and apply what we learn to our work. Definitely, John. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for bringing it up. Anytime, Jane. Let's mark our calendars and make sure we're fully prepared to make the most of these sessions. 20. Commute, navigating traffic, public transport, or remote work setups. Hey Jane, how was your commute today? Traffic seemed heavier than usual. Oh, tell me about it. It took me almost twice the time to get here. I'm considering exploring alternative routes. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. Have you looked into public transport options? I find it less stressful than driving, especially during rush hour. I've thought about it, but the schedules don't align perfectly with my work hours. Plus, I like the flexibility of having my car. Understandable. Have you considered remote work occasionally? It could save you the hassle of commuting altogether on some days. That's a good point. I've been hesitant about remote work, but it might be worth trying, especially on days when traffic is particularly bad. Exactly. It can provide some relief and also increase productivity without the distractions of the commute. I'll definitely look into it. Thanks for the suggestion, John. How's your commute been lately? Not too bad, actually. I've been experimenting with different routes and leaving a bit earlier to beat the traffic. Smart move. I might have to start doing the same. Thanks for the tips, John. No problem, Jane. We're all in this together. Let me know if you need any help figuring out remote work setups or anything else related to commuting. Will do, John. Thanks again.